Today, we're talking about how to play a Montuno on the vibraphone. So to start with, we have to ask the question, what is a Montuno? Well, a Montuno is a kind of piano arpeggio pattern or vamp that you hear in lots of styles. It comes from the Afro-Cuban tradition, and you'll hear it in all sorts of styles labeled Afro-Cuban, Afro-Caribbean, salsa, mambo, pachanga, waracha, cha-cha-cha, Latin jazz, and probably a bunch of stuff I forgot as well. It comes up all the time and is a very, very useful type of pattern to know. There are lots and lots of variations and we're gonna stick with a very basic pattern today with a couple variations. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you some places to go so you can figure out kind of the next steps and how to learn more about Montuno. To start with, we have to know the clave pattern. In this case, we're gonna use a two, three clave the whole time. If you saw my last video on samba, you'll already know about what a clave is, and I'll link below so you can check that out. But essentially, a clave pattern is the rhythmic key signature of a piece. If you're in D major, you kind of know melodically and harmonically what you're using. You have two sharps, and that informs all of your decisions. Well, if you're in a 2-3 clave, then that informs all your rhythmic decisions. It makes all your rhythmic ideas possible. Okay, so we're gonna use a 2-3 son clave for everything we do today, and essentially we're playing what's called a 2-3 son montuno. And we're gonna stick with just one and one basic pattern just so that we can understand how this works. So a 2-3 clave pattern goes like this. Dot, 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 dot. That's our basic clave pattern. You need to know this and think about this all the time that you are playing anything that utilizes this clave. A little side note about the notation. I wrote everything in this video as cut time. I've seen it written in 4-4. I've seen it written in 4-4 as 16th notes and a couple other variations, I think, too. They're all right. I've seen musicians I respect and are knowledgeable use different versions of how to write this. I just use cut time because that's what I've seen the most personally in gigs that I've done. But if you have a reason to write it a different way, feel free to change it. And if you have a really good reason why I should write it differently, let me know in the comments because I'd really like to know if there is a standard version or not. Okay, so back to the clave. The entire time we're playing this uh, Montuno, that clave is in your head. And so we need to know how this basic pattern is gonna line up. And we're gonna start with a one chord pattern. We're just gonna play one chord and have the clave going. And every example during this whole video, I'll have the clave playing too, so it'll be a little bit easier to hear how it lines up. When we look at the basic Montuno pattern, it starts with a couple downbeats, then everything else is upbeats. And that's our basic pattern. And I hope you can hear how it lines up with the clave. It always has to be lining up with that correctly. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna change the pattern a little bit. The first note, we're gonna play an octave on the outside of our chord voicing, and then we'll play the remaining chord tones on the inside on the next note. And we'll go back and forth like that. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, out. And it's gonna go like that back and forth. Now we'll take that same thing and we're just going to add an arpeggio on the very first part of the pattern. You will hear those two versions of the Montuno all over the place and a lot of times players will go back and forth. They won't stick with just outlines, they won't stick with just the arpeggio. They'll go back and forth to mix it up some. So now we need to apply this to a chord progression because we've been stuck in one chord for a while. So we're just gonna do a one, four, five, four progression. Okay, we're gonna be in G. And so we're gonna go G to C to D to C. Now 
notice that the chords did not change on downbeats, which is kind of obvious since we're playing all upbeats. We have an anticipation just like we had before in all our Brazilian stuff we talked about in the last couple videos. And that just means we're getting to the chord like an eighth note earlier. So we're getting there before the downbeat of the next chord. So one thing about this is I find it kind of uncomfortable to play and also uncomfortable to get a lot of volume on the vibraphone this way. So the way we're going to change the Montuno to fit on our instrument is I'm going to play the octaves in my right hand and then below that I'm going to play the other chord tones in my left. When you hear pianists do this, they're typically using both hands and playing across multiple octaves. So we're going to spread out the whole size of what we're playing and we're going to make it easier on ourselves and we're going to be able to really hammer out those octaves as well to give it a little bit more motion forward because you'll be able to hear it better. Now I hope you noticed that I also threw in a chromatic passing tone at the end, which just meant when I went from the C chord to the D chord, I went ahead and went C, C sharp, D, and just kind of slid up there just as another variation you can do. Let's talk about ways to practice Montunos so you can get better at them faster and lock in with the clave accurately and correctly. So first, what I always tell people is clap the clave, sing the Montuno. Right, that's rule number one. Get that down first. Make sure you can do that before you even approach the instrument. Then it'll be a lot easier to play on the instrument because you know what you're going to hear. Once you have that down, try playing both on the instrument. In this case, I'll do the clave in my right hand on a couple chord tones and I'll play the montuno in my left. You're also going to want to know how this fits with what's called the tumbao bass pattern. So I'll play a right hand montuno and the tumbao in my bass to learn how those line up. That exercise could even be used in a performance. If you were playing marimba or a mallet cat, something with some real bass notes, you could actually just cover the bass and montuno at the same time. Could get tiring for a really long gig, but in a pinch one or two tunes, you could definitely pull it off. Once we have all those patterns and we can do the coordination, it's going to be a lot easier to play these convincingly because you know you're always going to be lining up with the clave pattern and the other players in your group effectively. Now let's talk about other resources that you could use to learn more about playing Montuno. The first is 101 Montunos by Rebecca Molion. If you want to learn more about Montunos or learn anything about them, you just need to buy this book. It is an invaluable resource. It has all the history, all the styles, it has listening assignments, and it has lots and lots of examples of variations. If you're just getting started in this style, you need to buy this book and just work through it. I find it's kind of the quickest way to get all the information in one place. If you're not new to this, then it's a really good reference if you're trying to figure out how to navigate a certain chord progression or something. It's probably in here and you can at least get a head start on figuring it out. So what you want to do is take the information that we just talked about on how to put it on the vibraphone and different variations on the vibes with like our right hand octaves and then apply it to this book and the examples that are written for pianists. Now I have two more resources and both of these are drum set books. First we have Conversations in Clave by Horacio Hernandez and then we have A World of Rhythmic Possibilities by Daphnis Prieto. Both of these are drum set books that will give you lots of information on how to navigate playing rhythms on top of the clave. Not just Montuno patterns, but also rhythmic ideas in general that can help you in your melodic soloing as well. And also they will help with your coordination, which is always a good thing when we're working with uh, multiple rhythms happening at once. I hope that helps. 
Let me know if there are any other styles that you'd be interested in hearing about, and I'll see if I can do a video about them. Let me know if you have any questions about this. And if you have a favorite Montuno, uh, a particular recording you really like, put it in the comments so everybody can start listening to even more examples, because there's tons of variations and lots of amazing players out there. If you thought this video was interesting, do the like, subscribe, and all that, and please visit my website, ericmartinpercussion.com, where you can get my charts, my album, my educational books, and stuff if you're so inclined, because that would help me out a lot.